so that was 20 years ago. You've now had, this is nice, 2001, 2020, you've had this lovely 20 year anniversary of your mm-hmm. career as a novelist. Mm-hmm. What, um, I mean, this is a huge question. You can take this any direction you want. What's different in, you know, the world world or the publishing world or the, you know, Jen writing books world? What, in 20 years, what's different? Okay, well, in 20 years, I mean, when I wrote Good in Bed, I was a single lady who had recently had her heart broken. Um, I had no children. I had, um, you know, no obligation. Oh, look, they're dropping the link for Richard Russo's chat. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, you know, my life was very different and it was very easy for me to find time um, to kind of fit it in with my day job as a reporter at the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, whereas now it, it's like, it's sort of come full circle because there were years when my kids were little and they needed me all the time. And I had a nanny and I had a housekeeper and like my whole village lots of relatives, my mom would come help. And now my kids are teenagers and want nothing to do with me and my life is once again my own. So I would say that's a big change. Um, The internet is obviously a huge change because like, so good in bed, some of you may have read it, some of you maybe have not. It's about a woman whose boyfriend dumps her and then writes an article in a magazine called Loving a Larger Woman that's all about how brave he was to sort of be with her and isn't he wonderful and wasn't she silly to be so insecure and blah, blah, blah. And the book opens where Canny Shapiro, the heroine, is at her desk at the newspaper. Her best friend calls her on a landline, says, go to the newsstand, pick up a physical copy of this magazine and turn to page whatever. (laughs) And I'm thinking if that were to happen now, her friend would text her and say, you know, just like, here's this link I just saw on Buzzfeed, OMG, you know, emoji, emoji, emoji. Um, <clears throat> the internet has changed so much. It's, it's changed the way we communicate. It's changed the things we communicate about. Um, it's changed what it's like to um, stalk an ex-boyfriend. Like I tell my kids, yes. like my life was so hard. Like if you wanted to stalk your ex, you had to do that in person. Like you had <laughs> to get in a car and physically yeah. like drive by his house. You couldn't Google him. There was no you had Google. to You had to cut out the letters from the magazines and tape them to the letter yes! and send it in the yes! mail. <laughs> right. You, you had to like call his like, outgoing the, the outgoing message on his answering machine, machine. Which had a tape in a box and listen to it to hear if he had changed <laughs> it to see if you could figure out if something was going on I mean um and publishing was very different too um the whole process of like finding an agent finding a publisher like I wrote my first novel on a mac classic that did not even have a modem because what even was that And, um, you know, I printed it out at Kinko's and then I bought a book and then again, a physical actual book, or maybe I took it out of the library. No, I'm pretty sure I bought it. It was called a writer's guide to literary agents. And I just like made a list that I cross-referenced with like all of my favorite novels. And I would look in the dedication or the acknowledgement to see who the agent was. So like I made a list and then I like sent my query letters off to these people with no idea, like if they were still working, you know, if they'd retired in the time since the book had been published, if they died since the book had been published, like you just had to like hope for the best because there was no way to check because there was no Google. There was no Google. It was a different 